is found by looking at the number in here with the x and the number here following the absolute value brackets. If there's no number with the x, it's understood to be? And if there's no number after, it's understood to be 0. But don't forget this special little treat. We've got to change the sign inside. So our vertex is located at positive 1, positive 3. So we start with our vertex. And our slope tells us to go up 1 and out 2. Our line is broken. Rise over run. Our line is broken. And our shading is down. Less than. Down. So down below this thing. Up one, see normally in a line we go up one and to the right two. But because this is a absolute value function, we go up one, we go to the right two, and to the left two. So that's why I say up one and out. You go out one, two, one, two. Dwight. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. And also, real quick, before we go over the three thingies, don't forget there is a difference between this and this. This is an absolute value function. When there is a y and an x, it's an absolute value function. This... is two parallel lines, one at positive 3, oh, yeah. one at negative 3, and they're vertical. Okay? Absolute value of y equals 3 are two parallel lines, but they're what? Horizontal. Because y can be positive 3 or <coughs> negative 3. Okay? Don't forget that. Don't get it confused. All right, now last night's homework. Let's go. Ask me some questions. How do you explain it? Number 29. 13. Yeah, that's useful. Number 29. Number 29. Number 29. Can we take it through the test and make it its own test like we did with substitution? Let's look at number 13. Okay, remember yesterday I said work in a straight line down your paper. Okay? Go through your notes from yesterday and see if you still have this. And in fact, I'll simplify it. So write it again for those of you who are absent or who weren't paying attention. Take your first and second equation. Eliminate a variable and you are going to create a new equation. Bubble it, circle it, box it, do something. Okay? Because you have to come back to it. So you need to know where to find it. Then take your second and third equation. Eliminate that same variable. Okay? Oh, you have to do the same variable. Same variable. Because you're trying to create two new equations that have the same two letters. Does everybody understand That's that? That's not what I did wrong. Okay. Like if you're going to get rid of x here, you have to get rid of x here. If you're getting rid of something else, you're not helping yourself out. You're just walking around in circles. But the confusing one was like when it said z equals 11 or whatever. Then, then you can't use your first two equations. because it always Well, then you don't have to go through all the steps. These are the steps to go through when there are three variables in all three equations. Okay? Now, once you have found those two new equations, then you take these two and you solve them for the two letters that you have. Okay, so you solve for those two letters. What, let's say you solved for x and y. Okay. Once you know x and y, 
You take this information, plug it back into the very beginning, and get a final letter. All right, now let's actually do something. Number 13. Number 13 is very easy, and this is why. Wow, I can figure out what A is right now. Two. A is negative 2. Okay, well let's look at my next equation. 5A plus 2C equals 0. Well, I know what A is. I already know what A is, which leaves me with just one letter left. So if A is negative 2, then negative 10 plus 2C equals 0. Well, I can figure out C. Add 10, 2C equals 10, 5. Add 10, divide by 2, C is 5. I'm already over halfway there. My next equation said 7B plus 3C is equal to 22. Well, I know C. C is 5. So 7B plus 15, because 3 times 5 is 15, equals 22. That was the only one I got right. So B equals 1. Now remember the graph, the big 3D thing I showed you? That's an actual point. It's called an ordered triple. What order do the letters go in? A, B, C. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. The what? All right, let's look at number. I didn't finish. I subtract 15 from both sides, get 7B is equal to 7. If C is 5, then 3 times 5 is 15. Right. I'm just plugging in over and over. Okay, so we skipped number 15 and we did number 17, right? Now, so number 17 has three letters in all three equations, so we need to follow our steps that I gave you. 2R plus S plus T. Equals 14. The second equation says negative R minus 3S plus 2T equals negative 2. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Because my first step was first choose a variable. We're just going to get rid of R. Just the first one. Okay? I'm going to get rid of R. And take the first two equations and eliminate R. Well, how do I eliminate R? What do I have to do? I got to multiply this one by 2. This is number 17. All right, so the first equation did not change. The second equation becomes negative 2R minus 6S. I don't know why I keep doing my S is different, but just deal with it. Plus 4T equals negative 4. Check my math. Because I wanna, I'm going to eliminate R, so I want them to both be 2s. Okay? So now I have negative 5s plus 5t equals 10. All right, I'm going to bubble this off. Yes. It's both. Positive t, 2 times 2, positive 4, positive 5. All right, what's the next thing I need to do? Take my second and third equation. So my second equation was negative or and my third? 